Oops. Hey, a little technical excitement there. It's five o'clock. It's Monday. It's the 21st of August. If you're <laughs> like on a plane, if you're not intending to go to watch me work, I mean, you should, you should get off now. Um, but uh, I'm SLP. This is Watch Me Work, where we hang out and talk with you about your work and your creative process. We have been doing this show for about 14, 15 years. Uh, we started out in the lobby of the public theater. And then when COVID came, we went on to Zoom. All the while we have been embraced, helped, assisted by the public theater and in New York City and by Howl Round. Um, they're awesome. We love them. We thank them. Um, so what we do is we work together for 20 minutes. And um, then uh, I take your questions about your work and your creative process. And while we don't really have the bandwidth to have you read your work aloud or anything like that, or show us your paintings or show us your choreography, um, we do have plenty of time and space to talk about process because that's something we can all relate to. Um, even if we don't ask the question ourselves. So if you have a question about your work and your creative process, which you'll ask after we do the 20 minute work session, you can, we're gonna, oops, I've, I'm, I'm spacing on the name. Oh, it's, it's Cody today again. Oh, Cody, right on. Okay, Cody's gonna tell us how to get in touch. Go Cody, thank you. Um, yes, once our 20 minutes is up, we, um, if you're in Zoom, you can feel free to ask the question. Uh, by hitting reactions and then raise your hand, and I'll be able to see that in one minute. Um, if you are having any trouble finding it, feel free to just raise your hand with your video on or put it in chat, and we can make sure that you get unmuted. If you are watching on the screen on Power um, let me sure I just got a screen share moment. Okay, is that better? I think that's better. Okay, thank, thank you, you for that feedback. <laughs> so just to repeat that really quick, raise your hand at the bottom of the screen in reactions, you can hit raise hand. Um, if not, feel free to raise your hand um, on your on with video on and I'll call on you. Uh, if you're watching on the stream on HowlRound, feel free to send us your questions uh, via the Public Theater's Twitter or Instagram account or via Watch Me Work Twitter account, which is at Watch Me Work SLP. Uh, with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. And uh, we will make sure to get that onto this, into this space. Fantastic. Thank you, Cody. Uh, we've got 20 minutes. We're going to work together. Here we go.
All right. All right. That was 20 minutes. We're back. And if anybody has any questions, we can talk about uh, your process. Looks like Charlie has a question, right? Beautiful. Charlie, you should be unmuted. Thank you. Hi. Hey. I um, can't remember why you said something last week that had me thinking about this through the week, but do you ever find yourself walking away from a project for a stretch of time and then coming back? And if so, like, why do you walk away from it and what brings you back? Wow, that's a great question, Charlie. Oh, I can't imagine what I might have said. <laughs> I, I wish I could tell you. <laughs> well, it's okay, but it's a great thing that you were thinking of. Um, hopefully, it's about uh, something that you're working on. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I have a writing partner. Uh -huh. uh, not long, well, let's see, in the middle of the summer, she essentially encouraged us to walk away from this thing for three weeks just as a mental reset Ooh. and then come back. Well, and I... It, not my inclination to do that, but we did that. It was probably the right thing. But you know, I'm still asking myself, when should I do that? Why? Right. Great. That's a great. It's a great question. It's interesting, Charlie, because it, it sounds that you have a writing partner, and it was her uh, suggestion or her, her request that you, yeah. you know. So, so if you're so if you're on your own, right, and and just you know, which you probably are with other projects, and you're thinking. I mean, sometimes, you know, it's like that. I mean, I'm going to date myself and I don't care that Kenny Rogers song, you know, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. You've got to know when to walk away, know when to run, and you got to know when to stick with it, which is, you know, which is sometimes to take a breather, you know, give yourself a timeout, a little bit of distance is just what you need. Right. Just to get your breath. I mean, for example, if you're in an intense conversation with somebody, sometimes it's really good to just say, let me take a breath. OK, that's stepping away from the intensity of it, because sometimes you need some perspective that you can't get if you're all up in it. Right. Um, sometimes it's although if you make a habit of like, I got to step away from this, I got to step away from it. It's too hard. Right. Then you're correcting. You're, you're overcorrecting too much of a good thing. Taking a pause is a great thing. And some projects, you know, Charlie, which you probably know it, we all know this, they take a long time. So you might write a draft. Usually when I write a draft, I put it in the drawer and let it cool like a pie, you know, let it cool down a little bit before I do a rewrite. I do that a lot. And, and how long might that cooling be? I mean, Ooh. and again, it depends on yeah. the project and how intense yeah. it was and all that. But that's sort of, what I'm struggling with, not struggling, but I'm thinking about is like, how much, you know, is this just a little palate cleanser or do I need a big break or, you know, that oh. kind of thing? Well, well, uh, I'm going to ask you another question. You don't, don't feel obligated to answer. Is there some feeling in you like it's weird to be writing something with some writing partner and then they decide what should be done and you have to sort of comply even though you're not feeling it? Is there anything of that going on? No, I thought it probably was, like I said, probably the right thing. I mean, we had just written this full length musical libretto. Oh, great. It was a lot of work. Congratulations. And, oh, well, thanks. It felt good to get to yeah. a crappy draft. But, you know, my tendency is like, okay, now what next? You know, go, go, go. Sure, sure, and she's sure. like, hey, we need, you know, let's take three weeks, just walk away, don't even think about this. And then, again, it's just sort of probably the right thing. It's just like counter to my, personal tendencies, but I, so I'm just trying to get a sense of, sure, sure, I sure. probably wouldn't have done that on my own and maybe I should have, probably I should have. Okay, I, I think it was a good, it sounds like a good call on her part. Three weeks is good, you know, more is maybe a little too much, then you kind of forget, you know, you get all involved in other things. I generally take time away from projects. I mean, yeah, I, I, I wrote up, finished the, an, yet another draft, yet another draft because I've been working on it for 20 years, yet another draft of my second novel. I've been working for 20 years. I finished the draft a week ago. I took a week off and I'm starting another draft. Why? Because I have a little stretch of time because the writers are on strike in Hollywood. <laughs> you know, so a week is a, is a, for me, is enough time away because I want to jump back in. Three weeks is great, you know. 
three weeks is good. I would say maybe um, maybe think of other projects that you might want to work on. Oh, no lack of things to work on. But yeah, I just right. I'm just curious sorry, in your in your world, in your head, uh, what it's like to take a break. Yeah. I, I, I love stepping away from it. Because then when I come back, even if it's a week, even if it's a, a three days or whatever, I can see it. I can see it more clearly and love it more dearly. Sorry, I'm quoting all the silly shows now, but I can see it more clearly and love it more dearly. Um, yeah. If I step away a little bit. Cool. Even, hey, speaking of which, even Jesus took three days. I need some space. <laughs> right? I mean, so, you know, it's been done. Thank you. Great question, Charlie. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else have a question? Linda. Hey, Linda. Hi. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. You're, you're having a great day, it sounds like. Um, um, I, I'm thinking, I'm, I, I, my question, yeah? Is I remember you. You moved here recently, didn't you? No, no, no. I'm from Germany. I'm I know, but I, that's what I mean. Uh, do you, so you're 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 in Germany right now. I'm in Germany. I remember. I remember you. Where where in Germany are you? In in Berlin. Um, okay, okay. And I and I will say what I said last time. Probably when we come and visit, my husband's German. When we come and visit, we'll we'll have to hang with you. Oh wow! Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, so my question is. <clears throat> I'm working on something and um, I take experience or themes from uh, things I have um, um, yeah from from my personal life mm -hmm. and um, and I don't know when I get to the point that the distance and then that it it gets abstract enough. Uh, also, I have the problem with the creative distance. Mm. <laughs> huh. Huh, huh, huh. You mean you don't have enough creative distance or you have too much? Um, I'm too close is my close. experience. Uh -huh. I'm too close on uh, the personal experience to be able to um, make it, uh, to open it or to make it um, uh, somehow something own, <laughs> which it's then is, is not, uh, is not uh, no longer uh, me. <laughs> it right. becomes something else. That, that's um, that's uh, the dilemma. <laughs> Do you so when so Linda? Here's a question: um, Is it a play or a movie or a short story or a novel? What what is it? What uh, you yeah, I'm not a writer. It's it's an image. It's an, an Im image, Wait. or or it could be come more, but starts with an image. Right. And and uh, yeah. <laughs> so no, no, no. This, this is fine. So, but the sto the story, right? Are you writing a story or are you doing a series of images? Well, so, um, I, I, I just want to have one image oh. and it can become more. And there is a story behind. Right, um, right, 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 and, right. Um, yeah. Okay, no, 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 this is good, this is good. So what I was saying, if you have an image, do you have an image in your mind of the main character? Um, not really at the moment. Aha, uh -huh, good. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay. I want to, I want to uh, find an image for a situation. Um, and, uh, and also it's about a hidden critique. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, I don't know. What I, I, Injustice. <laughs> Vivasta? Injustice. Okay. 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 Um, since it has, since it happened. Okay. This is just an, a thing to try since you're building your story off of a personal experience. Okay. 
And since you want to create as much distance as possible so that it can be its own thing, right? So it's like, mm-hmm. that's just, this is it. You want it to be the fact, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I suggest that you imagine you 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 have a part you go out you see somebody's face or you choose so you go on the internet you see somebody's face that you like imagine the story happening to someone that's not you imagine it like pick i don't for fun you know pick a movie star or a personality you know just it happened to them and so you're going to tell the story to yourself you're going to start thinking about it as if it's their story and not yours mm-hmm. try that um mm-hmm. I know you have themes of injustice. You have you have think you you think visually. That's great. So run. So imagine you're seeing it happen. Like you're the witness. You're not the subject anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're just you're the witness, and mm-hmm. you see it happen over there. Mm-hmm. It's happening to a person who looks not like you, mm-hmm. like that. Um, mm-hmm. And run the story in your mind like that, and slowly it the story will gather details that are specific to that person over there. Mm-hmm. And it will, it will sort of start to get dis- get further and further from you. I'm trying to do it on the screen, you know, mm-hmm. does that make sense? It's a very good skill to totally learn. Sense. <laughs> yeah. It's a very good skill to learn because when we work with historical characters, when we work with, um, you know, people, people in our family, whatever, we have to learn to, to use literally to use our imagination and to, to uh, imagine and, and also gives you an opportunity to imagine yourself literally walking around in someone else's shoes mm. and suddenly it's their story and you're witnessing it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Super. Yeah, super. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So German. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please give us an update. No, no, I was a German major in college, so we go way back. Um, please give us an update though, okay? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Great. Beautiful. Um, Erica. Hey, Erica. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. I'm secretly at work in a gift shop, but oh. nobody's here. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you again. I, I every now and then I go and uh, watch me work and see if it's coming back. So this is my first day back. Yay! And, uh, Thanks for coming back. It's so fantastic. Um, so I'm in a. I think I'm in the home stretch of this this novel I'm writing. I know, I know, and something amazing happened, and I wonder if it's amazing. Like I don't want to um jinx things, but I want to use the energy that I'm getting from it, which is that like this kind of relates to um what you were just saying Linda which is this woman came to town and she was like the embodiment of my main character like I couldn't even believe um that it was she was like what I was thinking in my mind and she's an actress and everything and um I was like okay so yeah first I have to finish the novel and then it has to be made into something else where it could be a thing but um I find that it's like really helping my writing because I'm like actually can hear her voice a little bit now but Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be I don't want it to ruin it like I kind of want to tell her but I don't know if I better and um that's I guess what I want (laughs) to know (laughs) that's what my husband goes he's like no 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 no, I'm sorry I don't want to cut you off is that your question that's it I mean that I I just want to to see how I can use the energy without ruining it. Well, first of all, Erica, congratulations for in, you're in the home stretch of your novel. That is fantastic. Yeah. And the universe has sent you a sign saying you're on the right path because this person is like real. Yeah. Right. Um, it's of course it's not the movie star, or the star, the person that you saw, right? No. And no. I was just not telling her only because then and a, a series of assumptions might be made on her part. Like yeah. I put a star in this when it's made for, you know, a mo- you know, no, yeah. more, more as importantly mm-hmm. with, with our litigious society, um, you're copying me, you know what I mean? So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, what in, they call in the, in some parts of India, icky sticky, <laughs> you, know, you don't want it to get icky sticky. It's your novel. You wrote it, you, you know, so while she would be great, to play the role in a, in a, in a film, yeah. it's not, 
It's really okay. not. It's you. Hello. Right. It's you. It's just a part of you that you haven't recognized before because your imagination got in between you and whatever you needed to write about and created this other person that you can watch. Right. right. You're exactly That's right. It. Linda, she just, she's, Erica's doing what we talk, just talked about. That's it. All right. So, yes. And you're you. so good, Erica, that you actually manifested an actual person. It was a little that's, weird. That's uh, yeah, it does. And also, weird. I know my history, and I usually can't do anything unless I'm doing it out of like some weird like love or obsession. And so, <laughs> like, it helps me. But I, but even if it's fake, like, even if I'm just sort of doing it for that, it like gives me like forward motion without Fantastic. like doing something wrong. So I want to, like, it's not like I'm really like madly in love with this person, but I'm just like can't even believe how like it, that it happened you know what I mean right yeah anyway so that's so great okay congratulations congratulations beautiful thank you <clears throat> does anyone else have a question that they'd like to ask Conan should be able to unmute. There you go. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, hi. So, um, so yeah, I'm a playwright, and um, the question is, um, at what stage, or at, I guess it really depends on each playwright. But when do you share your first draft with other people? Is there a general? Is there sort of a general? Really you have? Does it depend on each yeah. piece? Yeah, I have a really hard and fast rule. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, I have so many weird hard and fast rules, and they they're lovely because it's all it's it's tailor made. My hard and fast rule is also tailor made to you and your gut, and you ask yourself, Conan, when you have finished your draft, ask your tummy tum tum tum. You know, or your alt, your second brain, right? Your deep, deep brain that knows so many things. So I, I, I want to show it to people. Um, why do I want to show it to people? Do I want to show it to people because I want to hear positive feedback or because I need them to help me figure out what it is? Or why do I want to show it to people? And is there a draft, another draft I could do? so that I can step forward with as much confidence as is possible given what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, that think it, I think it really depends on the work and the context sometimes. Exactly. Stuck and, 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 and you need help. And sometimes you feel like you need that constructive criticism and more often than not, you just need encouragement. More often than not, you need encouragement. The best place to get encouragement, Conan, is from yourself. That let that let there be let the wellspring of your self love bubble and shine and be glorious. That's the best place. And then everybody else is sort of like, you know, co signing what you feel about yourself. You see what I mean? Um, you you want to you want to give yourself that love that that you know even if it's just sorry the the drag racing outside down. Yeah. Um, even if it's only like a pat on the back, good job, or you take yourself out for a, 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 an ice cream cone, or you buy yourself some a vinyl that you know that vinyl record that you really want, or whatever it is, you know, buy yourself a treat, or go for a walk in the park with friends, somehow to celebrate yourself because you finished a draft, good job. Um, as much as you can do that on your own then you're going to be really better prepared to receive the feedback, the encouragement, the critique, the whatever it is, right? Um, of course, some people in grad programs or whatever, they're, they're writing, they have to go by a deadline and they have to turn in at a certain time. That's a little different. Sometimes you have to turn in when you're not ready. But does that, does that make sense? Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Great question. Great question. Thank you, Conan. Um, all righty. So, Lori, you should be able to. Hey, Lori. Hey, how you doing? Hi. 
Thanks again for this. And thanks everybody for the great uh, questions. It's just so helpful to be here with all the creative energy and juice. Um, I'm still working on the FARS. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm one of those people in the MFA program working on the degree and man, have I got deadlines. Right, right. So right. here's one of my process questions that I've been stumbling on for the last week. I uh, handed in a series of, of uh, dialogues that my mentor wanted. And then um, he came back and said, okay, great work, but with your main uh, protagonist, I want that dialogue. Your, your stakes aren't high enough. The tension isn't there for something really mm. specific. Mm. And I'm, I'm, my creative process question is, I'm struggling with that more with comedy than I do with any kind of tragedy that I'm writing. So any ideas in a comic situation of still how to you know, get that tension there without having it slip into something more tragic and keeping it comedic, oh. but still getting that tension high. So there's my question. Sure, 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 sure. Just um, if you can, like, uh, you can. You, uh, what, what, what's your dominant hand? Right, right. So how about with your left hand? Just do an exercise. So can you see me? So I'm sticking my arm out like this. Okay. Take your way out. There's something across the room that you really, really want. You're not going to get up to get it. <laughs> and say, and now turn your palm up, up to the face of the ceiling. Okay. Right. You yeah. really want something. Your character has to really, really want something. Yes. Think of think of Shakespeare. They really want something. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, and it's not, it's not like it's not like uh the Scottish play, I really want something. <laughs> you know what I mean? I really want something. Or I'm a, I really want something. It's not that. It's <laughs> oh, okay. Right? Yeah. So see you laughing. So it's fun. Yeah. Right? It's, it's yes. and, they, and they really, really, really want it. And watch some rom coms or something. Rom coms yeah. have big Bridget Jones. Okay. Okay. Bridget Jones. What's it called? Bridget Jones's diary. Diary. Right. I mean, Bridget Jones diary again or whatever. Right. I yeah. mean, or, or, or bridesmaids or I don't know. Any of those shows with an idea like that, that's, or, or read Shakespeare's comedies. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You yeah. Just, okay. Comic, the stakes are very, or, or any episode, I think I've only seen, I haven't seen enough to really be an expert, but any episode of any comic sitcom, you know, okay. high stakes, it's all like, oh my God, I messed up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, and later we laugh, you know, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? It does make sense. Yeah. yeah. You can even walk around your home with your arms outstretched. <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to do that. Fun. Then you get the vibe, you know? Yeah, that's good. And I need to get the vibe because again, I'm on deadline. But yeah, right. You yes. need to get the vibe. You need to get the vibe now. You yeah. have the vibe, Lori. You have the vibe. You okay. know you're laughing. You're laughing. You understand what to do. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Who's next? I think I think Jillian has a question. Can you unmute her, Cody? There she is. Oops. No. Yeah, there she is. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. <laughs> Great. Uh, so my question is, well, I guess it's kind of the opposite of Conan's, right? Um, which is kind of what Lori was saying of she's got all these deadlines and Conan's like, when do you show it to people? And I, I love that process of feeling ready and celebrating your milestones and yourself before you turn it in. So as my question is on the other side is, what do you do with feedback that you get that you're not ready for? <laughs> Uh-huh. that you're not ready for like um i'm like well you know uh tennessee williams's great essay the, the tragedy of success right so but i'm guessing is it feedback that said you were you know the best thing since sliced bread and you can't take that or is it feedback like you need another rewrite you know jillian and it's which which way is it it's it's the more of the it's more of like the constructive criticism where you need another rewrite kind of thing or like, you know, I think this would be better, you know, or I think Ooh. this, this feedback, like, you know, this is what I think would improve the process. It, right. Like, you know, obviously I'm open to hearing and, 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 and getting that feedback and I need to hear the characters and I need to like, you know, get ideas of what's happening in the story. Mm -hmm. But I end up with, I end up with about three different buckets of feedback 
and I sort of want to put it in a little jar or a little filing cabinet. Like I want to record it because I don't think it's bad. I just feel like I need to put it away Mm -hmm. until I kind of get to my end point where I'm like, okay, this is it. I'm happy with this. Um, Even though I've had to continuously show the work, I Mm -hmm. guess as a way to show that it's actually happening and progressing. Um, so yeah, so that, that's the question I guess I have for you is, have you been in that situation or how, what's a good way to deal with that when Mm -hmm. you're getting feedback that I won't say is too early, but yeah, I guess it's a little early. Like I, I'm not, I don't want to stop in the middle of writing to go back and rewrite. I want to get to the end and (laughs) Yeah. So that's, boo. that's, that's very tricky. Cause you said a couple of different things, all of which are, you know, part of what you're saying, but it sounds like you're in some kind of a class or a program or something that is asking you to, to show work uh, on, on the schedule, on the classes schedule. Yeah. So it, but, it, it's, it's like work, it, it's sort of workshopping. So it's working mm-hmm. and then, mm-hmm. you know, Right. Right right, 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 schedules right, 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 right. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's a, that's an interesting way of, of working the majority of uh, classes operate that way. Mm-hmm. And I personally don't think it's a great idea. I would not want to be in that kind of a process. And then you ask, well, how else might the mentor, the fabulous, brilliant, awesome mentor who is kind enough to teach the class, let's give them their props, right? Yeah. How yeah. else might one know that the work is being done, right? I mean, I'm just punting. I, you know, I would, well, I would, I would have some ideas about that. But anyway, that's not about that. The point is, what do you do since you're in it? Yeah. And um, I would say, I'm, I'm guessing that you type out or write down all the notes as they're coming along. Yeah, I write the notes as they're coming along. And okay, and then, and then, right, and then you do, you know, you just put them in a, like, like you said, if if you have a, you you can print them out. And put them in a, a a lidded container. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, really. So, I mean, something actually physical, like this mental. You know, all this, this, uh, everything on the computer. Nothing's written on paper anymore. All that. It kind of is tricky because it doesn't actually give you the tactile sensation that you were that you were doing while you were talking. Mm-hmm. If you can print out the notes, or if you write them down in a notebook, an actual, you know, paper, you know, paper notebook, you know, like this, right? Yep. You, and then you can take that notebook and put it in a drawer <laughs> yeah. and say off limits until you're done. You know what I mean? So you're dutifully recording the notes, but not trying to incorporate them until you're done with what you want to write. Yeah. Okay. And granted, right. There's going to be some bleed. There's going to be some, you know, their notes are going to be in your head. Mm-hmm. You're in the, you're in the program. They don't call it a program for nothing. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. When people ask me, should I apply to a graduate program? I'm like, do you want to be programmed? <laughs> if you want to be programmed? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Be mindful of who's who is going to be doing the programming. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're part of the you're on the you're in the program, but you have to you have to find ways to carve out your own uh, 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 strategies so yeah. that you I mean, stay true to what you want to do. The mm-hmm. other side of it too is I. I can probably change the program, right? So it's not, I'm not te- technically in a grad program. I'm working oh. with a series of theaters to put up the play I'm writing. So okay. I can probably change the way the system's working, but right now it's, okay, th- what do you have so far? Let's look at it. Okay, you know, go back, continue writing or whatever. What oh. you got? And, it, the, and the point is, I think that what I'm hearing is that while the 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 entity is great the theater is great the dramaturg is great the person you're working with is awesome amazing that way of working is not does not feel right to you yeah i'm learning it doesn't and i think in a class like academic setting it worked better because there were class assignments or something in my head yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so well you just said you can you can change the program so stop doing that then jillian okay (laughs) They say they say we want to see if you're writing or whatever, right? In Watch Me Work, we don't. I don't ask anybody to show in their work because I figure if you're here, you must be doing something. Yeah, and that's good enough for me. You see what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. a person can say that the mentor can say we'd like a draft by you know December 31st. Mm-hmm. Let's check in every week, but you don't have to show me pages. That's mm-hmm. not the only proof of life. Mm-hmm. Every it. single person in this Zoom room right now. Mm-hmm. are given we're giving each other proof of life no one has read their work out loud in this thing 
I trust you. Yeah. I have faith in you. It's the honor system or whatever it's called. It's like, I know what you, I know you're doing your thing. Mm-hmm. Else you wouldn't be wasting my time. Yeah. Right. And, and if they don't do their thing, and, and if you weren't doing your writing and you don't get it done by the 31st of December, Jillian, mm-hmm. well, that's your, that's all you girl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You need a babysitter. Yeah. And they don't need validation. The dramaturg can find other ways to validate themselves or the mentor mm-hmm. because there are other ways to, to ensure proof of life. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so you can change it. So go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Or, and maybe with the mentor, maybe there's a middle ground in there if, you know, you really revere them and there's a way to, you know, so they can get what they need. Okay. So. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Great question. Beautiful. Thanks, Jillian. All righty. Uh, Louise, I think that we have time for one more question. Yeah. And then I have a little, so I have something. I actually thought of something to say if we were loose. Go ahead, Louise. Let's see. Oh, you're muted, sister. You're still muted. Did it did it come through? Can you hear there me? you go. Yep. Cody, well, thank you. I'm mentioning this, well, several reasons, because I'm always inspired. But uh, when I sit in and listen to other people, you mentioned 20 years of a uh, novel you're working on. You, you SLP, unless I heard. Uh, Anyway, my point is, I went to a reading of a friend of mine, and the work I thought was absolutely wonderful, a part of it. It was like in two acts, and as it turns out, the writer, um, she wrote the play 20 years ago, and like I said, I, I just really, some parts of it, well, the first act I just thought was magical. The second act I felt was probably could be flushed out more. Mm -hmm. And what they had was um, little cards that you could write whatever you thought and drop in the bag or in the place where people leave comments. But my question is, as a, if you're, if you're, if you've done something that is really has a lot of potential, the playwright. So what is the next step apart from a backer? Because I remember years ago, back in the day with August Wilson's plays, you know, they would start one version and then they it would play here and then it would morph into something else, but still the idea of it, what he, had originally intended. So what do playwrights do today? How would someone that had a really good work get with the person that could, you know, flesh out what they're doing more? That was the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good question, Louise. Usually um, they're, they're what used to be called out of town tryouts. And the idea is that with August Wilson, he would start in Seattle, then maybe go to Chicago, then maybe go to Atlanta, and then come to New York. I'm just making that up. But he he, he would he would, I mean he would work on the play. It wasn't like he didn't know it. He 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 was digging. He was excavating. You right. could say. Um, Players still do that today. They, they do. Might, uh, yeah, they they start out of town, out of town, meaning not in New York, um, or they might start in a smaller theater and then move to a larger theater where you can work, continue to work on the play, revise it, um, change it as you need to, as you get closer and closer. Yeah, think of like the Glass Menagerie started out of town, moved into New York, all, all the plays. A lot of people still work like that in regional theaters and even smaller theaters, um, theaters that really aren't on the big map are great places to do that, where you have a committed and very talented group of, of theater makers, actors, designers, whatever, and your director can either come with you on the whole journey, or you can start with one director and then have another director uh, when things as things change. Um, gives the playwright a lot of time to work on their work and a lot of fun experiences, and you can meet a lot of great people who don't necessarily live right you know, near you. So It sounds like you're saying that for the writer, if you have a good director that hangs with you, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you like, if you like them, you guys get along and making something beautiful. Yeah, I would, I would, I like to stick with with people, but uh, it's up to the writer, really. Yeah, because like I said, it was just, um, it was really a wonderful work. Mm-hmm. Oh, great. But she, the fact that she wrote it twenty years ago, 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So amazing. But anyway, thank amazing. you. Amazing. I've thank got something. I'm going to try, try something new because last time we had a lull and I was like, huh, if we have a lull? I mean, I like silence, of course. But I also thought of something that might help. I'm reading it off my device here. Um, so this is something new that I want to start, try something this week and maybe in the last two minutes. If we don't have any more questions or a lull, I could offer you um, what I'm calling a suggestion for your digestion or the watch me work tip of the week. And uh, this disclaimer is that I'm not claiming to have invented any of these things, but each one of these things I'm going to share with you is something that I've definitely tried and found it extremely effective for um my creative process and 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 perhaps yours. Okay, so that's the disclaimer. So if you're having difficulty with your creative process, if you're blocked, if you're like too twisted up in your own perfectionism, uh, you don't know what to work on, you don't know how to start, you lack motivation, you don't know how to finish something, you know, you're having one of those days or one of those weeks with your creative thing, a project or multiple projects, or just can't get your head around how you as an artist interface or fit with the world you probably heard before but i tried it i am suggesting that you clean your room i'm suggesting the suggestion of this week the suggestion for your digestion is clean your room and notice i didn't say uh, delegate the cleaning of your room so you clean your room okay don't delegate it to, you know, a, a wonderful third party or your child or your husband or your wife or one. You clean your room. Um, if you don't have a room, define a space and call it your room and clean it. If you're tight on time, uh, clean for magical 20 minutes a day or 10 minutes a day. Just clean an area of your room for a very short time every day. Um I'm not saying do the magic of tidying up, you know, that very specific organization, throw out things that don't spark you. I'm not suggesting that. I'm just talking about wiping down the surfaces, organizing the books, wiping down some more surfaces, watering the plants, things like that. Sweep the floor, maybe vacuum. Um, and I'm also not saying clean your entire home. I'm not saying use cleaning your home, your space, your room as a form of procrastination. But what I found this past week is that I cleaned for 20 minutes a day in between things, and it really, really helped uh, my creative process. So just passing that along to you. It's six o'clock. Whoa. So are we back next week, Cody? Where are we? What are we doing? Yes, I believe we are back next week. I'm not sure if it'll be me or Lolly back with you, but somebody from the public will be around. Well, you're both amazing, and we love you and appreciate you both. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, folks. See you next week. La la la.